Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. I am Crystal Ann Compton and I'm so excited to be with you today. I come to you today with a message from Spirit and this is a message for each and every one of us. I believe this is a powerful message that applies to all of us. So as I speak, if um, it doesn't necessarily make sense to your thinking brain, that's okay. I just ask that you would open yourself up energetically and spiritually to what is being transmitted to you as it's being transmitted in the highest vibration, which is the vibration of love. And it is the vibration of creator. This is the only vibration with which I work ever. I work in love. I work with God. And we have a message for you. Now, before I got up on this video, I actually selected a few cards and we have a few messages for the weeks to come, but I selected this card for us today on this Wednesday because it really moved me. And I really see myself in this card. And I think you're going to see yourself in it as well. Now, this card is not, um, we're not going to just read the standard definition of this card and call it good. No, this card is going to serve as a launching pad for spirit to speak directly to you. This card today comes from the deck called Angels and Ancestors by Kyle Gray. Now, I love Kyle Gray's decks. I think the artwork is evocative and it's it's beautiful. I also think the guidebook is also inspired. But again, we're not going to be speaking from the guidebook today. We're just going to use the card as an inspiration. And the card that was pulled for us today, me and you. So I'm here with you getting this message too. Okay. We got the card of the elder, the elder. Now the meaning that is attached with this card is to move beyond ancestral patterns. Move beyond ancestral patterns. Before we can talk about moving beyond these patterns, let's talk about what these patterns are and how it is that we have them in our lives. Now, ancestral patterns can be patterns that have been ingrained in us in this life, from our mother and our father and our family units, our grandparents. But patterns can also be passed down generation to generation. I don't know if you've ever heard of the concept of a familiar spirit or a familial spirit. This is a spirit that passes in the bloodline from generation to generation. And many of us right now actually house or we accommodate spirits that our grandparents accommodated or created. We just don't know it. So many of these patterns that we inherit and that we choose to carry are patterns that do us a disservice in this life and we're unconscious to them. We don't even know that we're accommodating them. Now, sure, some patterns we know. Oh, I'm accommodating them. I've got some beliefs that my mother had, for example. I've also got aspects and behaviors, predilections and preferences that my mother and my father and my brother had. And those came from my grandparents before them. And these patterns actually serve me. I love these aspects of myself. They're, they're, um, they're an inheritance that I celebrate. But there are other patterns that I've been given, that have been handed down from my family that do not serve me and that are with me and that perhaps I need to truly let go and release. I can think of a few right now. My grandparents, like everybody, both sides of maternal, paternal, both sides of my family tree, there's alcoholism and substance abuse throughout. This is a pattern. It is a kind of curse that was passed down from my great grandparents to my grandparents, to my parents, and to me. This is not to say I'm an alcoholic, but there is the pattern of that. And if I were undisciplined, I could give myself over to that pattern. And I too could probably fairly easily become a substance abuser or an alcoholic. Another pattern that I know came into this life with me was the pattern, the behavior of anger. Well, actually, let's not call it anger because anger is okay. In fact, anger can be inspiring. In your anger, do not sin. It is the sin part that I inherited. It's the rage. It's the irrational anger that my father struggled all of his life with. And that my uncle struggled all of his life with. While my grandfather, their father, was a very docile and beautiful man. But their mother was kind of a mercurial, exacting personality 
which visited upon my uncle and father, this rage that they then visited upon myself, my brother, and my cousins. And that rage also showed up in other branches of my family. This is a pattern, a curse that kind of came with the territory when I incarnated in this world. And in fact, when I left my home at 18 years old, I just married. I got married because I needed to get out of there. And of course I was in love, but really I needed to get out of there. I didn't know how to be a rational person. I didn't know how to be a good person. I was infected with my ancestral patterns. And I took that rage into my first marriage. And it actually took me a long time, like a decade, to figure out how to not be consumed by rage and to act and speak from rage. I think I often am hard on myself as I look back on the crystal of my 20s because I wish I did, I just wish I could, I wish I could have known then what I know now. How many old timers tell us that, right? I wish I could have behaved better, but at the same time, it was part of my process. And the work that I did to release that ancestral pattern is powerful. That work allows me to help others do the same thing. So many of us have patterns, just as I'm speaking about. You probably behave in a way similarly to your mother, to your father, to your siblings, to your grandparents. You might behave in a certain way or believe in a certain way similarly to your great-great-great-grandfather or great-great-great-grandmother and you don't know it's unconscious. It's as if this pattern was a stone and this stone was dropped off in your backpack right before you incarnated with your blueprint and with your purpose. You also got that stone and now you're carrying it with you. And it's driving behaviors. It's also driving what you're manifesting. Here's what's up. We are always creating. We are made in the image of that which created us, the creator. And just as our creator had the impulse to create, so too do we create in this life. We are always creating. The question is, are you creating consciously? Are you creating intentionally or are you living reactively? Are you burdened by the stones in your backpack? The pain and the suffering of your grandmother, has it been passed down to you? as well as the addictions, the predilections, the preferences, the negativity, the moods, the indulgences. Have these been passed down to you? Let me tell you, we all have a little bit of something. We all have some stones in our backpack, but does that mean we have to continue to carry them? No. And the foundation of this message is that you are free and free indeed. Whether you carry these patterns with you in these behaviors and beliefs, consciously or unconsciously, you can set them down and you can release them. And sometimes it's so fast. It really is. Sometimes it's just awareness. Whoa, I see my mother so much in me and I see this rage of my father so much in me and I seek to release it. I don't know how. I don't know how to do it, but I intend to release it and So it is. It is released. While others among us have to go through a process of releasing. It's almost as if we're doing soul excavation, getting into the very fiber of our being, pulling out all the stones, weighing them, taking their texture until we finally set them down. But you can You are your own person. Nobody else, ancestor or otherwise, defines who it is that you are or what it is that you can do with your life. And so let us agree on this. That which does not serve me, I release. Say that. That which does not serve me, I release. That which does not bless me, I give over to spirit. That which does not bless me, I give over to spirit because spirit knows how to transmute and spirit can refine by fire. And let us have the intention, I seek to be refined by fire, which is to say, I seek to be refined by the light of God. Change me, make me better. Allow me to embody love, the love of my creator. Let me reflect that. Let me live and move and have my being in love. And anything that does not serve this, let me release it. 
for I seek to be in divine alignment with the God that created me. Feel that. Release that. And open yourself up now to the examination. Sometimes this is hard because examination involves looking at something, doesn't it? I've said consciously and unconsciously throughout this entire video, let me talk about the conscious stuff with you. Some of us know we're harboring these patterns. Some of us know we're nurturing wounds. We're nurturing unforgiveness. We're nurturing anger. We're letting our anger get the best of us. We're tipping over into sin, which just means we're missing the mark. In our anger, do not sin. And yet we're indulging this lower nature and behavior. Consciously, we know this. Ooh, this is worse than unconscious. Why? Well, let me not judge it because unconscious is insidious too because we don't know it's there. So how can we, how can we correct it? But when it's conscious and we allow it, it's doubly infectious because there's an intention in the allowance. When I allow myself to behave badly, not only do I do damage through the behavior, I damage myself by being complicit. Same with something like drinking too much or smoking. Now, I know a lot of us, we have addictions and that's part of life too. And it's about managing that and figuring it out and bringing in the awareness. But some of us have these addictions, don't we? And we know as we're participating in these addictions that we are damaging ourselves. We're conscious of this. And we feel bad about it. We feel shame around that. It's doubly infectious in this way. And so if you know that you're carrying ancestral patterns, the sins of your father, if you will, or the sins of your mother, if you will, if you know that you are partaking in behaviors and beliefs, narratives and actions that are antithetical or oppositional to God, then offer that on the altar too. Believe me when I tell you as somebody who's been abused, I know what it's like to not want to forgive somebody. I know what it's like to want to hang on to the infection and just nurture it because I'm so mad. But am I? Am I hurt instead? And am I now habituated to the hurt instead? I'm just used to it. I don't want to let it go because I'm familiar with it. Now is the time to be brave. You see, in order for spirits to come in and occupy your life fully, listen, in order for spirits to come in and occupy your life fully, spirit needs space. And these stones in your backpack, these patterns in your body and your mind and your spirit, they're real energy with substance. And they take up space. And the more space they take up, the less space spirit has to come in and transform and bring the miracles and bring the manifestation and bring the radical healing. Are you listening? Conscious or unconscious, it is time to move beyond our ancestral patterns. Truly to move beyond any patterns that do not bless and serve our purpose as a soul on this planet. Does it bring you love? Does it bring you joy? Does it bring you peace? If not, let it go. Does it bring you purpose? Does it bring you meaning? Does it allow you to be of service in this world? If not, let it go. You don't need to know how to let it go. You just need to be willing and to declare your willingness to spirit. I'm willing to let it go. Say it with me. I'm willing to let it go. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes, let's be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Thinking in a new way, no longer burdened by the patterns of our ancestors. And let me offer you this in closing some spiritual techniques and work that you can do to open up the space in your life by working in your timeline. Yes, work in your timeline. You're existing right now on a timeline, a linear one here, day after day, 
week after week, month after month, and year after year, we are progressing in our lives. We can take this examination and look at our life and everything that came before and look for what causes us pain and what disrupted us and what threw us out of balance and what hurt us. We can go back into those moments and we can bring love and light to all who dwell in those moments and thus bring restoration, transformation, and healing, creating space in the now. And also, you can go out of this timeline, jump out of this 3D life you're living in this incarnation and go into your mom's timeline. You can do that. Do you know that? Go into your father's timeline. You know them. You're pretty familiar with them. Well, some of us might not be, but many of us are. Through the chamber of the imagination, travel in time into the life of your father, into the moments and experiences that you know he had and imagine it a different way. Or just bring up a visualization of your father and love him. Love him as he did not feel loved. Forgive him for the things that he was doing wrong. Bring the light into his timeline and correct the ancestral patterns. Do you know that this works? You can shift things and move things and heal things in someone else's past timeline to create pockets of potential for yourself in this one. And so it is. If you believe it's possible, all things are possible to him or her who believes. I believe. I believe. And so the message today is take a beat. Take the backpack off the shoulders. Oh, it's heavy. Set it down. Look inside. What are you carrying right now? And what can you return to the earth? What can you offer on the altar? All the while trusting that spirit is right there with you as you do this examination. Spirit who always has your best at heart. Spirit who has planned a future and a hope for you. Spirit who will provide the resources for you to release this in your life. Amen. Amen. And so it is. Now is the time. Are you willing? That's all that's required. I love you all so very much. That was a message from spirit to you. And it is transmitted to you on the wings of my love for you. And truly, I say to you, I love you. And until next time, don't you forget that I've got nothing but love for you. Bye, guys. I am so excited to announce the 2020 Energy Intensive with me, Crystal Ann Compton, and my partner, Trisha Carr. The Energy Intensive is an eight-week comprehensive program that teaches and activates energy healing modalities. This program is unique. It is brand new, and it's cutting edge. It's also perfect for anyone interested in healing and in energy, and in particular, for intuitive people, for metaphysical seekers, and for spiritual practitioners. To learn more about the 2020 Energy Intensive, click the link in the description box below.